as we have started with the offline classes uh, students are each section is listening in their own class or it is uh, getting live streamed there oh great uh, and some of the students who have not yet reported will be joining from their uh, places but uh, recently we started uh, offline classes this is a good the, way this is a good way of uh, live streaming so that they can uh, be in their class and listen to this lecture yeah so what you are saying is uh, participants that we are seeing 35 36 year actually is not true representative because many are just listening in the class isn't it yes yes, yes. so that's a great way of uh, conducting yeah. the session yeah. please let me know when i have to start and yes yes we will wait for another uh, two to three minutes okay and then we'll sure. Dr. Nutana, I think we'll start over. Okay, ma'am. Shall I start, ma'am? Yes. Yes. A blessed morning to all the participants present here. I once again excitingly invite you all to the day uh, day five of webinar series. A webinar on entrepreneurship development is being organized by our college. Padma Shri Institute of Management and Sciences, Bengaluru. It is also supported by Kanti Lab Services Private Limited, Kanti Suites. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce the resource person for today's session, Dr. Jitendra Kumar Sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Jitendra Kumar Sir is the managing director of Bangalore Bio Innovation Center, that is BBC. Dr. Kumar holds a PhD degree in biotechnology from Institute of Microbial Technology, Chandigarh, a prestigious national laboratory which is affiliated to Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. Subsequently, he moved to University of Illinois at Chicago, where he worked on leukemia. In the next stint, as a postdoc at Ohio State University, Columbus, USA. He is the author on several internationally acclaimed peer reviewed papers. He holds an MBA degree from prestigious Fisher College of Business at Ohio State University. After returning from US, he joined as a vice president of Life Science Incubator at IKP Knowledge Park. Hyderabad, working with public R&D laboratories and to create entrepreneurial models of commercialization. He bought many government grants and created a world-class center for translational research in life sciences at IKP Knowledge Park. As a director and head of the Bangalore Bioinnovation Center, his current focus is on incubating innovations in healthcare, agriculture, food and nutrition, biofuel, etc. He is working closely with Karnataka Innovation Technology Society, that's KITS, Department of Electronics, IT, BT, and SNT, and Government of Karnataka, a vibrant life sciences innovation cluster in Bangalore. He's also an adjunct, adjunct faculty at University of Agricultural Sciences, UAS Bangalore, and Manipal, University, Manipal Institute of Regenerative Medicine, MIRM. 
He sits on various government committees and advises on policy matters. Now, I request Dr. Jitendra Kumar sir to kindly present his talk on innovations in life sciences. Over to you, sir. Thank you for the kind introduction. I am very honored to be here today uh, delivering this lecture on the entrepreneurship, incubation, and acceleration related uh, issues. These are very relevant issues, and I must thank Padma Shri College of uh, Engineering and Management and uh, Honorable Principal uh, Dr. M. Anuradha to invite me for this uh, talk. In fact, uh, I always uh, love and cherish uh, speaking to uh, entrepreneurs, would be entrepreneurs, the students whom I can encourage to, you know, to become an entrepreneur. And I know that uh, we have a lot of women entrepreneurs headed by Dr. Anuradha, who himself, who herself is a great leader in this. And therefore, our emphasis is also to encourage women entrepreneurship as well as in general entrepreneurship among the college and students, college students and, uh, you know, engineering and management students in area of life sciences. Uh, Ankita, can you um, start my slides? So, <clears throat> Bangalore Bioinnovation Center, I would just like to give a brief introduction. It is a um, center which nurtures the startups in the area of life sciences. Uh, this is a joint initiative of the Department of Electronics, ITBT, and SMT, Government of Karnataka, and Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. Although the administrative control is under the Government of Karnataka, uh, it closely works with Karnataka Innovation and Technology Society, uh, which is a nodal body uh, from the Department, Electronics, ITBT, and SMT, for implementation of the department's program. Next slide. So, uh, what I will do is, I will tell about Bangalore Bioinnovation Center uh, a bit, and uh, I will tell in a manner uh, of keeping this Bioinnovation Center as a microcosmic study. What it means, a microcosmic study, an inductive study, means that when I am talking about Bangalore Bioinnovation Center as a model, I am actually encouraging and exhorting all of you, the institutions, to have such kind of models for entrepreneurship and incubation and acceleration. I also want to say that this can be inductive in nature because you can actually create such models with the help of Bangalore Bioinnovation Center. So is it possible that we can create a hub and spoke model where Bangalore Bioinnovation Center can actually um, nurture the incubation centers across the state and that we are already trying to do. And uh, I am addressing uh, the college, a uh, very good college in, the, in Karnataka, Padma Shri College and also the students. So therefore a microcosmic and inductive study is something that I would emphasize, giving example of Bangalore Bioinnovation Center. If you have any questions, you can talk, you can uh, put on the chat, chat, box, chat, chat box, or even you can also ask uh, uh, such questions. So, Bangalore Bioinnovation Center is in the Helix Biotech Park. It is a biotech park, which is uh, around 86 acres of land in the Electronic City Phase 1. Uh, I think uh, you have come here, if I remember, but even if you have not come, you please um, come and see and interact with the startups in the Helix Biotech Park. Uh, so 86 acres of land is actually divided into three zones. One is the institutional area support, which is Institute of Bioinformatics and Applied Biotechnology, and Center for Human Genetics. These two institutions are doing very good work in their respective domains. Both of these institutions are supported by government of Karnataka, and they got a lot of funding support from central government and other sources. Then innovation and translational research zone is actually um, crystallized by Bangalore Bioinnovation Center, which is again in 10 acres of land. <coughs> <coughs> so 
sorry for the interruption. And uh, uh, Bangalore Innovation Center uh, caters to the need of startups in the broad areas of life sciences. Then we have industrial area for future support. Uh, this is represented by around 56 acres of land where bigger companies are supposed to come. The work has already started. And uh, most of these companies uh, would come within the area, uh, you know, year one or two, within one or two years from now. <coughs> now, why these three zones in a biotech park? The three zones in the biotech park are representative of the three um, very important stakeholders in the ecosystem of uh, life sciences. For example, there are two different institutions, uh, IBAB and Center for Human Genetics. They, they are uh, not only uh, providing the uh, training programs to these uh, MSc and PhD students who can be absorbed in the innovation and translation research with the startups, or also they can be absorbed in the future bigger companies which are coming. That is one synergy. Second is, they can generate intellectual property rights, uh, patents which can be commercialized through Bangalore Bio Innovation Center. So it's important that these educational institutions are in the same um, vicinity. Third is, the technical support, the scientific support needed for many of the startups and innovators can come from uh, IBAB and CSG. Uh, fourth is, many of these uh, uh, startups who, which are becoming bigger and bigger, they can get some space in the uh, you know, industrial area that we are setting up. So that means we want to provide a full spectrum of services to the startups ranging from the idea to commercialization within one, uh, you know, within one location. Uh, also, many startups can find their uh, ways to many bigger companies who can you know, do mergers and acquisition, collaborative support, they can fund also. So this whole ecosystem is uh, self-imposing, uh, interdependent, and uh, all the components, they interact very well uh, in the ecosystem, enriching the whole ecosystem. Next slide. <clears throat> so any incubation center, not only Bang Bangalore Bio Innovation Center, actually would provide lot of nurturing support to the innovators. I have used the word innovators, you must have marked, and not these uh, companies. See, uh, incubator is where the innovative ideas are nurtured. And even if you have not started a company, you are just a student, we can help you. And that, that is why the incubator is meant for uh, not only students, but faculties also who have any new innovative idea. They can come and join us and we can provide uh, infrastructure and equipment facility, which is a plug and play, and branding, networking, funding, uh, mentorship. Uh, and in the due course of time, you need to uh, start a company. It can be a partnership firm, it can be a private limited, but that you have to start one day. But that is not a limiting factor to go into the incubation center to test your ideas. That is uh, very important. And I think all the incubation centers and accelerators should be open to uh, innovative innovators who may be students and faculties, uh, et cetera. <clears throat> now, funding is a very important uh, you know, program because without funding, you know, biotechnology cannot take forward. My biotechnology ideas cannot uh, move ahead because it requires a lot of uh, um, time. Uh, it requires a lot of capital investments. It requires a lot of... Um, a lot of other things which is very expensive and we cannot afford that. It is not like IT where, you know, small money can also, you can do some, you know, um, you can create one software or, you know, some other things. So, you know, biotechnology inherently requires a lot of capital investment. Uh, therefore, funding is something we can uh, definitely think about. Then key areas are healthcare, food and nutrition, agricultural biotechnology, in environmental biotechnology, industrial biotechnology. So, uh, all these areas are the main branches of life sciences in, uh, area and domain, and therefore uh, these are very uh, you know, uh, supportive of uh, each other because see, if we're talking about agriculture, it definitely has a lot of implications on food and nutrition and healthcare. Even many raw materials come for industrial biotechnology and environmental biotechnology is deeply 
agricultural biotechnology. Yeah. So, therefore, yeah. we would say that life sciences are very interdependent area and a lot of confluence and convergence is possible. And therefore, if you have any idea in any uh, area, don't be hesitant to uh, come to an incubation center and say that, okay, I want to test this idea. And if the idea works, you can start your company uh, and you can, uh, we can, you can avail our yeah. uh, funding. I'll talk, talk in another slide what kind of funding support is available uh, from our side. Uh, there are a lot of uh, funding opportunities and we can uh, assign some mentors for you. These mentors are very experienced people who have done entrepreneurship uh, in the area of life sciences and they can guide you with the real life, uh, you know, touch and real life examples. Next slide. <clears throat> when we talk about infrastructure, we have, we have a lot of incubation suites. Um, what is this incubation suite? These are laboratories actually, which can be given to you when you approach the incubation center. These are of different sizes, 550 square feet, 250 square feet, and even bench space, depending upon your budget. Uh, and of course, if you get fund, funding support, grant support, you can afford any of these labs sir, through the grant money. You can derive some salaries also for, from your grant money. So therefore, uh, this is a very good opportunity, I would say, for startups or for innovators, student innovators to come and avail uh, such kind of facilities in any incubation center. As I said earlier, I'm giving the example of Bangalore Bionation Center, but it is a microcosmic and inductive study where I am trying to say that you can uh, use any of the incubation centers nearby and uh, approach Bangalore Bionation Center if you need any help. Okay. Now, in... In, in infrastructure, we also have created a lot of meeting rooms, conference rooms, training rooms, etc., which these innovators can use for their meetings, for their you know meeting with the clients, and uh, you know using it for various other activities. Next, talking about central equipment facility instrumentation, we have a very good cell culture facility. We have um, BSL-1, BSL-2 cell culture. Uh, BSL-3, we are trying to build uh, with the grant support from uh, government. But right now, BSL-1 and BSL-2 are uh, very much uh, operating. And also, we have a GMP facility, good manufacturing practices. You know about GMP. GMP is a facility where uh, uh, the if you are doing any biologicals or vaccines or any material which needs to be injected into the patient, it has to be given to the patient for clinical trial or even later also. But we have uh, created this pilot skill only for uh, cl small clinical trials where the, they can grow these uh, biologicals uh, in systems and uh, in a GMP environment and they are ready to be uh, given to the uh, patients for clinical trial. So BSL-1, BSL-2 facility and uh, the GMP is something which is included in the cell culture uh, areas. And of course, it is well equipped. We have a lot of um, laminar airflow, put CO2 incubators, routine inverted trinocular tri tri fluorescent microscopes, etc., which are available. We have ultra-low freezers and other cryopreservation facilities available too. Next slide. Central instrumentation facility, of course, has a molecular biology lab where we have uh, uh, facilities for recombinant DNA technology analysis and comparative study. The equipment required for the isolation of nucleic acid and cloning and expression of genes are available. These include gene pulsar, PCR, real-time PCR machine, digital gel analysis system, automated liquid handling systems, etc. And uh, uh, these are actually... Um, we can. Uh, we, we are trying to enhance and augment the facility as we are going moving forward. Uh, uh, we keep on adding um, new equipments to the list whenever it is required by uh, any innovator. So, government of Karnataka and government of India have been very liberal in giving a funding support to the incubation centers such as Bangalore Bioinnovation Center. Next one. Again, uh, moving ahead with the central instrumentation facility, which is a national facility, and it is open for any innovator. So it is a most democratized system of uh, uh, using the scientific equipment, where anybody having any idea can come to us 
and say that we they want to use this facility and we will be very happy to let them use provided they know how to use it and our staff are always there to help um, uh, talking about the proteomics and small scale analysis lab we have protein purification facility which includes all the infrastructure required for isolation and downstream processing of proteins using lcms and acta fplc hplc nano dsc and itc ngc biorad chromatography electrophoresis systems and gel documentation etc and uv visible nir spectroscopy again we keep on adding so we have lcms ms now uh, here we have brought uh, we have bought uh, which is not mentioned here recently we have bought so therefore um, it includes all the uh, most of the uh, you know uh, kind of downstreaming and uh, 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 isolation of uh, molecules uh, etc uh, next slide Coming to the microbiology facility, we have uh, laminar airflow hoods, autoclaves, microscopes, incubators, freeze dryers, shakers for growing and screening microbes. See, why I am telling about all this uh, one by one is because scientific, uh, you know, scientific research work, uh, be it students, faculty, or even startup or a bigger company, they need equipment to do their experiments. And unless uh, we talk about what the incubation center has. uh for you you may not even understand so therefore i am listing all these equipment for you. next we have flow cytometry and cell sorter facility to detect the and measure the physical and chemical characteristics of a population of cells or particles and also to sort a heterogeneous mixture of biological cells into two or more containers one cell at a time based upon the specific light scattering and fluorescent characteristics of each cell next histology lab histology lab is equipped to process a wide range of specimens from paraffin embedded specimens to perform a variety of histological and immunohistochemical analysis on tissue samples uh, major instruments include vibratom microtom cryostat paraffin embedded systems and automated slide stainer we also have now a, a very uh, high end microscope confocal microscopy facility which is a stellar uh, stellar is uh, white laser this is one of its uh, most advanced version in currently in, in our country next one central instrumentation facility also has a uh, fermentation facility which is around 100 liters uh, of course to for pilot scale but also we have 1 liter 3 liter 5 liter 10 liter 15 liter uh, sartorius and aplicon fermenters next and of course these are all backed by in house 40 kld etp and stp plant uninterrupted power supply dg and ups backup in house liquid nitrogen plant 60 liter per day capacity next intellectual property cell is something that we are very proud of they we conduct prior art patentability freedom to operate patenting landscaping patent validity infringement analysis etc this uh this uh, intellectual property cell caters to the need of ip requirement for any innovator if you have an idea and you want to see whether it can be patented or not you can come to us we will provide you all the prior art patentability freedom to operate patent landscaping patent validity infringement analysis etc and uh, uh facilitation of ip filing and prosecution process and invention disclosure form etc required many ip firms are in panel although we don't file on your behalf but uh, or in innovators behalf but we can always uh, uh, you know tell our ip firms who are in panel here environment health and safety division the objective is to provide a platform for the incubators uh, of bbc and management to work together to comply with applicable legal regulations and resolve any issues related to ehs environmental health and safety division are very important for us because uh these are areas which require lot of deliberations most of the startup companies are uh, entities in itself and they do not have uh, they 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 may not uh, share all their processes and uh, you know experiments with us so how do we actually uh, say that these are safe yeah. 
because they are operating from one common place so we have created some norms and i'm i am very happy to tell you that uh, we have been able to create a national standard for environmental health and safety agriculture food and nutrition division is funded by rashtriya krishi vikas yojana where we are creating um, and nurturing the to promote entrepreneurship in the areas of agriculture food and nutrition uh, it provides infrastructure mentorship branding technical funding ipr and networking support to agriculture and food tech startups to achieve effective commercialization and partnership approaches between universities research organizations and the agri business and agri food industry that support the use of innovation for inclusive and sustainable growth next one creating an innovation ecosystem uh, is very important for us because as you can understand uh, innovators will not be will be invisible will not be known by the world uh, you know in case if we do not provide them the globe ecosystem so we create a global ecosystem actually if you can see here we have partnered with uh, victoria and uh, you know um, and uh, uh, ms kate jones minister for innovation and tourism and industry has also visited our bangalore by innovation center um, victorian premier mr daniel andrews also has visited bangalore by innovation center and uh, you will be very glad to know that uh, we have Uh, signed an mou with victorian actuator which is a national incubator to conduct a, a pitch program i mean the india centric you know it's a global program that we are implementation partner in india uh, to see if uh, we can uh, select some of the innovations and uh, help help them reach uh, venture capital ecosystem in australia so many th three or four entrepreneurs from india have been selected so far in this uh, in this process there is a mentorship also the program is called medtech got talent and this has been successfully running then japanese delegation uh, keeps on coming to us and we have uh, mitsui beyond next venture jetro and mou has been signed between jetro and and uh, bangalore by innovation center which you will see in the next slide uh there are two different conferences which we are very particular about bio us and bio korea we participate in these both the uh, programs and uh, um we take some startups also there so that they can display their products this display their technology they can get exposure they can forge links they can have lot of collaboration they can attract lot of funding which on by themselves they cannot do so we provide a platform we actually um uh, take them on on our expenses so they don't have to pay the money also okay so these are the great opportunities any innovator can avail to a incubation system acceleration system next one as you as I, as i already said we have signed mou with jetro the penny state organization and any incubation any innovator can uh, who wants to access the japanese ecosystem we can help uh, in that now see again and again i am emphasizing that i am just giving example of bangalore innovation center as a model incubation and acceleration system just think about it in a way that okay this is any incubation center should have done should be should be doing this okay uh, so i am actually talking about the incubation centers and accelerator not necessarily about bangalore innovation center but i am bangalore innovation center i am only giving as an example next one next slide please the national linkages are very important for us we are uh, you know partnered with national defense council uh, agriculture indian council for food and agriculture nascom uh, product launch uh, we do regularly at birec which is biotechnology industry research assistance council etc so we are partnered with other institutions like next slide indian institute of uh, horticulture research this is a national body which caters to the need of the startups next one again we have signed mou with indian institute of management bangalore and this we did on the occasion of third covid 19 product launch organized by bbc i'll talk about that how this 
startup com companies and innovators can develop products and how we can help them launch these products at the platform where it is visible to the group. Next one. See, the, the regional linkages are key to us. Although we have national linkages, international linkages, that is important. But unless we have a homegrown entrepreneurs uh, from the student community, from the faculty community from here, it will not have any sense to go national and uh, international. So we have a uh, lot of industrial visits from various institutions in Karnataka and Bangalore. For example, PES, RV College, GKVK, VIT, Oxford, etc. We have signed so many MOUs, uh, you know, uh, NITA University, Government Ayurveda College, RB College, BMS College, uh, giving Indians global access, Shri College of Ayurveda and many more. Next one. You must be uh, very happy to know that Nirmala Sitaraman, Madam, our Honorable Finance Minister has visited our center and encouraged our entrepreneurs and many people. See, uh, it is very important for us to show that uh, or, you know, why our Honorable Finance Minister has chosen Bangalore Biomachine Center is very important. Because she has noticed that a lot of innovations are happening and uh, uh, she has interacted with our startups. Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't think any other uh, institution has attracted the attention of any finance minister so far in the in the history of our nation. So this is a very proud moment for not only Bangalore Bionation Center, but whole Karnataka, whole Bangalore. And uh, I'm sure that such uh, attention from the central government is very important for us to encourage the entrepreneurship system, uh, system here. We, we, we also held a stakeholders meet in biotech um, uh, you know, hosted by Bangalore Bionation Center. Next one. Again, the same slides. You can see various mini dignitaries here. Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, Madam is there. Our MDK bits is there. And the many more entrepreneurs. Okay, next one. So, this is a very important slide and I would like to devote some time here. Without funding, the innovator, innovators, nothing can be achieved, I think. And all the incubation centers across India has some, some, some way of funding the startups. But Bangalore Bionation Center goes off a lot of funding. And I'm sure that any proposal coming to us will not go empty handed is our assertion because we have a lot of funding. Now, the first fund is Startup India Seed Fund Scheme, which is uh, instituted by Department of Internal Trade and uh, Department of Internal Trade, DPIT, actually. And uh, uh, Nidhi Seed Support Program, we have from uh, DST. We have Virek KTEC Seed Fund. We have Idea to POC Elevate 100 from Government of Karnataka. We are associate partner of Biotechnology Ignition Grant from Virek. So, all these uh, grants enable us to uh, fund any innovative novel idea. And of course, for availing these grants, you have to actually register company or partnership firms, etc. So a single innovator cannot uh, get the grant. I think by the ignition grant, you can apply uh, unless they have changed this now. But I heard, I, I know that for, apply, for applying, uh, you need not have registered a company. However, don't think that Starting a company is a Herculean task. It is just just a day-to-day, -day, one or two days task. If you are not have you know um, okay with registering a private limited company, you can actually register a, a partnership firm, which is as good for applying to these grants. Next one. We lay most important uh, emphasis on women entrepreneurship and empowerment by BBC. So Bangalore Bionation Center um, has certain benefits for the women entrepreneurs. For example, 10% incubation seats are reserved for women founders for incubation at BBC. This includes usage of central instrumentation facility, mentorship, networking, branding, etc. 5% of the seats are reserved in BBC's Bayrek KTEC seat 
uh, which is Sustainable Entrepreneurship and Enterprise Development Funds. Any training program, course, workshops, etc., organized by BBC will have 10% seats reserved for women participants. BBC mentorship panel constituted to mentor the startup shall have minimum 10% of women mentors. One annual exclusive webinar on women entrepreneurship is to be conducted by BBC. Uh, these action points were announced during the workshop Women Entrepreneurship Opportunities and Challenges organized by BBC in presence of Dr. Shalini Rajneesh, IES. So we are very committed to that and we want to encourage women entrepreneurship. We are talking to many women colleges and uh, even women in the general colleges, co-ed colleges uh, to encourage women entrepreneurship. Why it is important? Because it will lead to the women empowerment. Right now, we know that uh, many of the women who are highly educated and uh, technically and like, you know, uh, science STEM graduates, science, technology, engineering, management may have to, may have a career, uh, you know, block, a career, um, you know, uh, you can say intervention um, or discontinuity because of uh, family, uh, you know, responsibilities, children, etc. But this entrepreneurship can come in a big way because it does not require you to be going to office. Of course, it doesn't mean that they can, they, they will not, uh, there is less work in entrepreneurship. In fact, the quantum of work is huge. However, uh, you know, because government is funding, you can very out of it. And you can do your work, research work, whatever you had passion for, and this will be a translational research. So I think this is one way in which. Uh, uh, science and engineering graduate women can be empowered uh, who have a career break after uh, in, in the, during, because of the family uh, issues. So we are very keen to support that. Next one. Awards and recognition. We have top enabler, innovation enabler award from Braintree Media. We were innovative biotech solutions provided by Insight Success. Ecosystem builder award from government of Karnataka. And we are top bi incubator award from Biospectrum. Next one. Again, this all has been covered, so I'll not go through uh, again uh, this one. But one important thing is that we are now CSIRO recognized. CSIRO is Scientific Industrial Research Organization, and Bangalore Bioinnovation Center is recognized as CSIRO by the Department of Scientific Industrial Research. What it means is that we ourselves can also conduct some research, but of course we will not uh, go for basic and uh, basic research, academic research. Our research is focused mostly on creating some platform technologies, translational research, etc. We already have uh, a Drosophila lab running. This is I'm talking about BBC, not any startup companies, uh, you know, uh, doing that. But we have done ourselves, and uh, we also have. Uh, some uh, research programs going on with different universities like University of Agriculture Sciences and also, uh, uh, you know, Manipal Institute of Regenerative Medicine. Both of these institutions has uh, provided a faculty uh, position to uh, our team members. So what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say is that an incubation center can act as a, a catalyzing factor. You know, it can go ahead and uh, forge links with universities to uh, encourage students to create entrepreneurship. Uh, it can encourage, it can undertake research in translational areas because sometimes you may know as an incubation center, you may know better the market need and requirements for technologies than academic institution. And therefore, if there is a good manpower and research manpower in the uh, incubation center, it can be added boon for the economy and society. And that's what I'm trying to say. Next one. We have launched so many products uh, during the COVID and we are uh, still uh, running so many other, uh, you know, programs for developing the COVID-19 products. For example, automated RNA isolation, isothermal application kit for COVID-19 was developed jointly by BBC and SN Life Sciences Incubator at BBC. Next one. Six products were launched by Honorable Minister of Electronics, ITBT, and SNT on 7th June. These products have been developed at BBC under the mentorship of Dr. Jitendra Kumar and his team. So these are Shieldex 24, 
fluorescence probes and PCR mix for RT-PCR, care and duct viral transport media, Covastra, an AI-based device for detection of COVID-19 antimicrobial face wash containing herbal antimicrobials. Next, please. So we have uh, launched another set of products, uh, Padma Vitals, Mali's Cordy T, T, CD4 Shield, Beam Roti, Immune Booster, Daily Drops, Wedge Pulp, Water Sanitizer, Kitchen Tap, and Antimicrobial HVAC Module, etc. And these products were launched again by our Honorable Minister, uh, who has been very kind to support us in all our endeavors. Next one. Again, we launched seven products, NucleoDX, RT, COVIDX, Mplex, 3R, 4R. Actually, COVID, this NeoDX has launched these products and these are in market, beating many other products in the market. These are being supplied to the foreign countries also. Dr. Tapaman, Safe, Biosecurity Solutions, UV Beamer, UV Conveyor, and AI-based chain app, mobile app. Next one. We have partnered with Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences um, where Honorable PM during his inauguration foundation day gave a lecture on the occasion of which we have launched one uh, COVID-19 challenge, innovation challenge, and BBC is already uh, incubating three startups from this challenge, uh, which are coming up with their product. Next one. So these are the companies which we have funded actually more than that, but I'm just giving you representative examples. Next one. So these are our startup companies. I will not go through the details of each one because it will take a long time because uh, more than 50, 60 startups. But what I can tell you is that you can come one day and interact with our startups and see what kind of work they are doing. So these are the companies in healthcare. Next one. These are the companies again in healthcare. Next one. Again, these are in the healthcare. Next one. These are into med tech, meaning that medical devices and diagnostics. Next one. Agri industrial biotechnology. These are the company. Next one. Again, agri industrial biotechnology, biopharma. Next one. Associate incubators. Next one. Now, these facilities are not only used by the startup, but bigger companies also. So these are companies which are using our facility. So what is, why this is important? Because bigger companies can uh, interact with our startups, which are in the instrumentation center. It creates a platform where they can interact actually. And many things are possible. Next one. There are a lot of graduate incubators. They have uh, they have passed out from Bangalore Bioinnovation Center. They have established their own forms. Uh, so Jana Care, Terra Blue, Jubilin, and so on and so forth. There are some 25 graduate incubators. Most of them are successful. I think I, I think out of 25, 20, 20 are highly successful. Next one. Again, graduate incubator. Next one. These are the achievements of BBC, 100% occupancy. Uh, MedTech Center we have created through BioNES program of BioRec. Next one. Seed fund, mentorship, product technology launch, etc. Next one. MedTech got talent, I have already spoken about, so I will not go through again. We conduct a lot of workshop and other things, for example, leveraging IPR in pharma and biotech sector. We have launched. We have done this, uh, conducted this program. Next one. We have 600 number of employment generated and idea to POC elevate program. We are one of the implementation partners. Next one. Our minister Ashok Narayan. Next one. Uh, Vijay Raghavan is a, a principal scientific advisor to honorable prime minister. Next one. And uh, University of Agriculture Sciences vice chancellor. So uh, this is the last slide. I think, um, you know, I have to thank Professor Gobind Rajan Padmanabhan, who is a uh, direct, former director of ISC, who is a head of technical advisory team of uh, BBC. So under his guidance, we have done all this.
see i have given uh, you know taking bbc an example i have actually said that how uh, best a incubation center and acceleration accelerator can help entrepreneurship development in the colleges in the universities and also how these bigger companies can be involved uh, where these innovators can interact with them how the funding can be achieved by these startups how they can be mentored how they can be made um, you know known to the world about their innovation through various branding events branding networking events and their product launch so we also help in uh, getting the venture capital funds for them uh, for the startups uh, and 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 help in the scale up startup and scale up is very important when they are into the uh, you know uh, when they are scaling up their product they need more and more facility so it's a one stop incubation center and accelerators could be one stop solution for any innovative idea so with this i thank you so much for patient hearing i did, i think the time is up and if you have any questions please let me thank you dr jitendra kumar ji it was an excellent presentation our our students maybe the next incubate is at your center definitely actually the whole idea of delivering such kind of lectures in various colleges and universities and of course padma shri college is very key, you know i'm very keen on that is that so at least some of the students should take up this now i really feel and with this type of facility where we are saying okay if you have any idea you come we will not charge also if we have a collaboration with your padma shri college of engineering we will not charge anything from the students they can test their ideas they yeah. can start the companies later we will help yeah. them in starting the company we sir uh, i take this opportunity uh next week if we can uh, sign in mou kind of a thing uh, if you, if you are available or if you have some time next week we will finish it up at, at the earliest no it is getting dragged for so many days uh, we will finish it up at the earliest uh, dr indu will be approaching you so that we can uh, do something dr yeah. from our side can take this up ankita you are there you can just uh, see if we can uh, sign the mou i think uh, okay. uh, you can send us the draft if, if you have already signed with some institution we also have some draft so we can just see what are the areas of collaboration we can sign an mou yeah and i another uh, opportunity i take is i would love to invite you to the new premises actually okay. we have uh, come out with an excellent state of art facility with the new uh, premises please uh, do come to our thing once this covid i think it is tapering maybe an another 15 20 days uh, you will be free to where is it located ma'am it is located in kengeri oh kengeri okay kengeri uh, so next week or so we are planning our uh, another 15 20 days we are planning to inaugurate our entrepreneurship development cell uh, oh. so that uh, who will be uh, up to that maybe i can invite you uh, if everything goes as per our plans all these days we are doing everything online Uh, nothing is uh, been uh, done in physical except for the practical sessions and a few theory sessions now it is full fledgedly slowly one by one now first year pgs are on on the campus and the next week uh, other people will be joining us so that we can have a full fledged thing we can we can invite you uh, once again thank you for your time and opportunity and your excellent presentation thank, thank you. you thank you i look forward to more interaction yeah. thank you do if there are no questions from the participants maybe they can uh, interact with him physically when he will come around uh, yeah. because uh, as they are sitting in group maybe it might be difficult for them and other participants who are watching uh, live uh, from their own pieces so you please fill up the feedback form your feedback form is very important to us and we will uh, end the session uh, over to nutana you can please uh, convey the vote of thanks and you can end end the session yes ma'am thank you jitendra kumar sir for explaining uh, in detail about the innovations in life sciences thank you sir on behalf of a college i ex i extend uh, a i extend thank you uh, for you sir for accepting our invitation and delivering the talk I also thank all the participants who actively participated and made this session successful. 
Let me remind you about the uh, tomorrow's scheduled participants. Tomorrow we have a session at 11.15 a.m. on legal basics of entrepreneurship. The talk will be delivered by Neeta Mahadev Ma'am. So please do attend that. Yes, ma'am? Yes. Uh, so your uh, uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, principal, ma'am. I'll be Thank ending. You. Yeah. Hopefully, everyone they have given their feedback. Uh, there is someone, sir, is innovative idea enough or background research necessary? Sir, there is a one question in the no, chat. Uh, sir, is innovative idea is enough or background research necessary for startup incubation? It is for Ultimately, you have to uh, take it forward. Whether you are educated in that field or not doesn't matter because you can always hire people and we can help. We can help in all the ways. But if you have some idea, because you must be knowing, uh, Shanta Biotech was started by one engineer. He did not have any uh, biotech uh, experience, but he he saw that there is a need, and then he thought he deployed some people around that. So to answer your question. If you have innovative idea, the background and experience in that idea, that field is not necessary for starting an entrepreneurship. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for Thank answering you. the question. Yeah. Hope everyone has given their feedback. I'll be ending this session. Thank you.